have increased impervious surface in a, in a watershed or an urban area, um, there's, there's detrimental effects to the ecosystem. And so you have the urban core, which is highly dense, and then you have the rural areas, which are yet to be affected. If you have those forested areas and agricultural areas, and then you have this complex transition zone in between, and these are the areas that we're focusing on because they're the most ecologically vulnerable, and they're actually something we can do something about. My name is Holly Howard, and my affiliation is with the Rubenstein School of the Environment and Natural Resources, where I am getting my master's degree. The transition zones between the urban areas and the rural and forested areas um, are what, as ecological planners, we might call hot spots because of their ecological vulnerability to development and increased impervious surface. When you have unplanned development, or some people might call sprawl, but poorly managed growth, you have these fragmented forests, you have increased impervious surface, and all of this can be highly detrimental to an ecosystem. What I'm working on is how can we define these areas so we can define them by using different variables of impervious surface, forest fragmentation, road density, and all of these variables can go into deciding what these zones might be, and that would help us indicate where to focus our resources. There's not really a definition of the urban-rural gradient that's similar to the work that I'm trying to uh, produce from my master's work. There's a couple different examples. Uh, the census defines urban as a population density, and so if there's a certain population density, then it's considered an urban area, but then if it doesn't fit that, then it's considered rural, and there's no in-between zone that they have there. Another example is the wildland urban interface, which is an interface that they use primarily out west to look at fire hazards and the fire risk of homes. The definition of the WUI only uses housing density and vegetation, uh, vegetation density. Um, the variables that I'm looking at also include other dimensions of what we might call urban sprawl or uh, what might constitute a transition zone that creates these vulnerable areas such as uh, you know, increased impervious surface, like we were talking about road density. Certainly housing density and population are important, but also what land cover is there. We have vegetation, there's buildings, there's roads, there's paved areas, parking lots, which increase you know, stormwater runoff and that kind of thing in an urban area. In the 2010 census, 30% of the population was in an urban area, but 80% of the population in the United States lives in a metropolitan area. So it's, uh, in recent studies, even in the recent Scientific American said that there's, there's no way that the growth in these cities can continue to happen in the way that we're managing these urban areas. The work that I'm doing here at the University of Vermont and then the work that I continue to want to be able to do throughout my career is to develop models that can be used, again, transdisciplinary or across different professions to reuse the word sustainable, to create a more sustainable environment.